1989, and he was working uh, here till 1984, then he was working at the other nickel powder breakers, and so the last uh, five or six years he was working here as a chief engineer, helping us with all the me mechanisms, because he actually he remembered how everything was at that time, and uh, for example, right now he retired completely, but he's still very active, you know, he's still skiing or skating, you know, the, the very active person, and in fact he's 76 or more. Yes, and, uh, and also, both of his sons are working at our as chief engineers as well. You see that uh, actually, so we have even all the, the history of this breaker has only 50, counts only 57 years. Uh, just while all uh, nuclear power death breakers were working, and actually, we already have little dynasties in that. Okay, let's uh, proceed to the smoking cellar. As you see, the crew was quite large. something was broken here, you could uh, make a signal to a person for example, stop or for the full speed or full back. You see, it was older version, so before they used such technology, and direct, direct uh, so management for sure is the, so the, this is the thing of the, so just of the modern time. Uh, also, we had a possibility to drive the icebreaker from the open bridge. We had the same, so the, the, the same thing, the open bridge, so the, this is the, it is a kind of tradition of 1920s, 1930s, so people were just uh, for example, our first captain who was working here from 1959 to 1961, he was working at the open bridge because he didn't get used to work in the closed bridge. So he, as he was about 60 when he started working here, for sure, all, so all his youth he spent at the coal power ice bridge and he was working at the, uh, just, he was working at the open deck, so just in the... ...had a thickness of uh, 32 millimeters. So there's a uh, still made for art. That's a part. <laughs> have isolation, for example, uh, you see that we have one meter of steel uh, here to protect people from here from radiation. So they, they could work without any problems for 20, 30 years with food uh, or the ice breaker. <coughs> so I even don't know what to tell it because I think you know it from the ice breaker at the time. So for example, two maybe, so not so, not so much, maybe four too much. They installed three, they were working for five years, and actually, so for the one decided it was trying to work, and then so that first of all, they had some problems with work, so just uh, we wish there was need to do it. was possible to solve them, but uh, actually, nobody faced such problems before, so, so they had to open them to repair, and then it's so actually better to replace them totally. And they replaced uh, for the period from 1930s to 
1960, 1970, yeah. they uh, so replaced them and installed two new but more powerful and more reliable. They were, for example, the, so the, uh, these uh, two were working for uh, four years and after that they were installed at the icebreaker Arctica, so the second level power icebreaker, which was the first one to reach North Pole in 1977. So actually the icebreaker even also it, it tested the equipment for the new versions of the icebreaker for the others, for more powerful. Mm -hmm. How long does it take? It's very light, you know, because it has very high mass, about, about uh, 30 meters. So I'm going to carve, you know, which is made for one person, but they manage to put six inside. It's not like a curve. Because they take, uh, they take three chrome movers to, um, to, to Tindau, uh, uh, and uh, actually uh, it took, like I think, 11 days by, by only by wind power, oh, 13, 13 days by wind power. Only by wind power. Yes, by wind power, you know, but I'm sure it's very light, you know, so yeah. they can very high speed, but you know, like, but still, they sometimes they saw ice, so, very yeah. dark, so that's why they, they have to go just quite close to the shore. Yeah. So that's why, like, 13 days, I think. You can go ahead. Like impressive. No, no, go ahead. It's okay, you can go ahead. It's quite impressive, really. Yeah, I think I will take a picture of that too. the reactors again. Uh, when we speak about the temperature here, actually it was quite hot here, about 25-35 degrees, because the steam inside had uh, uh, the steam inside had the temperature of uh, 250 degrees. The water inside the reactor had a pressure, uh, it was under the pressure of 120 bars and uh, you know that even so just the temp so it was enough uh, for water not to boil at the temperature of uh, 310 degrees Celsius. You see that uh, this was, um, so the, so this was a, a very safe and reliable technology because uh, reactors, you know that they are installed at the ice breaker. So actually it vibrates when it crushes the ice, uh, you know that when it works in the ice free water it's rather unstable because it has no keel and so reactors were so they were perfect working for a long period, they took years for example without any problems. Interesting. Yeah, so in Norway, Interesting one. Museum. <laughs> Look at the baby. Yeah. Yeah. That's the picture. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
closer here, yeah, the, the screw beam becomes closer here, so the computer will take a seat for the pipe. See, take a seat as the operator of the reactor, or as chief engineer, or each other reactor, but the principle are more or less the same. Just yes, anything set here, and as we have a little scenario here, for example, you, know, you can uh, launch the reactor, for example, you push different buttons, for example, like, for example, uh, how, to, how, to, how, to raise the, so how to raise the emergency protection system. We have four groups of graphite bars. Before we launch the reactor, we move them up, and they are held by electric magnet. When something is wrong, when there is blackout and we cannot control the work of the pumps inside the reactor, we actually cannot control the work of the control bars in the reactor. Uh, nothing holds more, nothing holds the um, so the control the, uh, the graphic bars, and they they uh, so just they fall down and uh, they shut down the reactor uh, in, in half of a second. So that's it. So that is why there were no accidents in this sea, for example, at the so during 57 years of the nuclear power death breaker. So, and when you do like this, like you raise, you see that they are down and they go up. One, two, group number three, four. Установите переключатель подключения групп АЗ в положение «Отключено». Включите тумблеры ПКР-1 и ПКР-2. The person who launched the so just the military uh, reactor and the civil reactor. has been to North Pole more than any other ship, about 53 times to North Pole during the 90s. So, and uh, 50 years of victory, which is a new one. Uh, one is being built, uh, you know, last point to finish totally. Uh, then, uh, so the second is being built as well, just on the new generation. Uh, so we have 
for working, uh, then we will have two, build, two being built, and one is in reserve, Sovietsky Soyuz is in reserve, if we have like, more work, it will be launched and will continue working. And also we have a unique nuclear-powered cargo ship, which is called Sevmorkut. It means Northern Sea Route. Sevmorkut, Northern Sea Route. And uh, it was uh, not in service for 80 years because there was no job, because it's huge 260 meter long ship. It's able to carry 38,000 tons of goods and work for seven years without refueling. It's able to crush one meter of oil. It's different at the far east of Russia, in Moscow as well. And, uh, um, but they maybe built in Finland or in Tibet. In Finland or in Tibet. And so this unique destination that we opened so is the real thing that is able to boost the interest of the people to have it. So how many people, uh, the icebreakers, either directly and indirectly, of Luman's car employed? Uh, first, uh, we, I know a lot about the local because we have them all.